a podcast to honor the gods. This better come with a sacrifice. Dave X Media. She was looking at Harry as she had never looked at him before. And all of a sudden, for the very first time in his life, Harry fully appreciated that Aunt Petunia was his mother's sister. He could not have said why this hit him so very powerfully at this moment. All he knew was that he was not the only person in the room who had an inkling of what Lord Voldemort being back might mean. Aunt Petunia had never in her life looked at him like that before. Her large, pale eyes, so unlike her sister's, were not narrowed in dislike or anger. They were wide and fearful. The furious pretense that Aunt Petunia had maintained all Harry's life, that there was no magic and no world other than the world she inhabited with Uncle Vernon, seemed to have fallen away. Welcome to the restricted section, the super de duper pro trans rights Harry Potter slander Harry Potter book club podcast, where a bunch of nihilistic millennial assholes discuss Harry Potter and realize that it's not as good as we thought it was, but we still love it. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry, we did it for you. Here's what we're talking about this week Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Chapter 2 A Peck of Owls. Wow, (laughs) y'all, this chapter is an absolute shit show involving a series of well-meaning owls and a whole lot of screaming. Harry is expelled from school for doing underage magic, and then he is unexpelled, and then he hears some super unencouraging words from Arthur Weasley and Sirius Black, and then finally comes a howler for Harry's aunt, Petunia. Remember my last Petunia. Whatever the fuck that means. All right, we have to wait for our fourth co-host, Rory. <gasps> Rory, oh my god! There he is. What's yeah, up, that's right. Bud? You're a good boy. Now be quiet. <laughs> Please be quiet yeah. for the recording. Yeah, people know that you come with the bird. As long as he's out. Like, and not, like, locked in his cage. He usually doesn't, like, screech his head off or nothing. The only thing he really yells is, let me out! <laughs> <laughs> let me out of here! Eric Andre at the at the White House. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get started. Y'all ready? Yeah, mm-hmm. do it. Welcome to the restricted section where if you don't kick yourself out, we will do it for you. My co-host today is one determined owl, Mary Payton. Say hello to the listeners, Mary Payton. Hello, listeners. It's your favorite uh, corporate middle manager back again. <laughs> uh, a cu- we have a couple different people claiming to be the alleged corporate <laughs> m- middle manager from the uh, amazing Apple podcast review. Um, send us a DM. Tell me who you think the corporate middle manager is. And our special guest today is a very dear friend of mine, very dear friend of the pod, and a uh, you're also banging a very dear friend of mine, so congrats on that. <laughs> it's Zach from My Cabbages. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Congrats Happy on the banging. Here. Yeah, really. Thank you. No, it's it is. It's it's some good. It's some good banging. <laughs> we, have to, we have to not say banging again. <laughs> so Zach, uh, I, I don't know. I guess we tell people about my cabbages like they don't know. Hi, folks. Uh, if you haven't heard of my podcast, I mean. You must be new to this one because I've been on before. Um, yeah, and also we like do a rotating yeah. uh, a commercial for yours. I run uh, half of the p- podcast, My Cabbages. It's a podcast about Avatar The Last Airbender. And we go episode by episode. We crack jokes. We do bits. And we, we talk about, uh, honestly, how impactful that show is to every single person that sees it. It's true. It's just one of the most perfect pieces of television in period. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with that. Um, So if you haven't watched Avatar already, do Mary Payton. How's it going? I know you're watching it for the first time. Uh, Did you come to a hard stop on that one? Okay. Your face says yes. Okay. Uh, Not because of the show, though. Just because my life is what it is and it's just crazy. So um, the chances of me getting to sit down and actually get through... Any amount of a show are rough for me. 
But I loved it when I watched it so far. Also, I think the problem <laughs> is that I started it when I was like pretty toasted one night and I was just like, I'm going to sit down and watch this and then fell asleep during it. So, oh, uh, that's yeah. the worst. I hate falling asleep during a thing because I don't want to admit defeat by watching it again, but I really need to. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Also, Mary Payton answered that question as though I like made Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> See, listen okay like, it's I'm not because so i don't sorry. love the show it's totally i'm so sorry I was i've like, always <laughs> loved your work i'm so sorry <laughs> sean does this thing where like if we if we watch a show together we're like watching whatever um and then and then i don't really realize that he he falls asleep you know we're watching like three or four episodes he falls asleep and then the next day i'm like oh do you want to watch some more only murders in the building because that's what we're watching right now. And he's like, yeah. And then he goes and puts on the episode that I, and I'm like, oh, we already watched this one. And he's like, well, I fell asleep. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking watch it again. You should have made me pause it, dude. You can't just do that. Yeah. My husband does the same thing, except he pretends like he knows that he fell asleep. He pretends like he didn't. And so we start watching the next episode. I'm like, babe, no. you, you should probably watch the one before. And he's like, no, no, no. I remember all of it. Like literally every minute. <laughs> oh my God, I do this sometimes too. And then we go to watch the next one. He's like, uh, I'm sorry, babe. Can we, um, I don't know what's going on. Can we watch the other one? <laughs> like, yes, yes. That new really cute Netflix movie, The Sea Beast. Yeah, uh, I, probably, I saw an ad for that. I probably have uh, I probably have a 30 to 35 minute gap of the ending of that movie <laughs> because uh-huh. I was just... Sn- like snoring sawing logs is it cute though the it's, part you saw it's really cute i really like it like it's when a i good saw one. the when i saw the little still on netflix i thought it was gonna be like a how to train your dragon because the sea beast mm-hmm. has like a similar kind of little derpy face mm. <laughs> not quite it's definitely in the same ballpark um mary payton how are you doing we haven't seen you all summer um yeah, I mean, I've seen you, but the podcast right? <laughs> hasn't seen you. I've seen you a lot. The podcast never sees me, Christina. It's true. Thankfully, thank God. I've been doing fine. It, has it been summer? I don't even know. Yeah, um, man, it's September now. Well, when I the episode mean, comes you know, out. It, it was like, you know, you could literally go outside and fry an egg on any true. flat surface for the past. And that's how I like it. Few months. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till it's not Christina's type of weather. And it's back to everyone else's type of weather. <laughs> you guys know that feeling when it's so hot that you go outside, maybe you like touch some like hot cement or something. It's so hot that you get chills. Oh, I love that shit. Like you have a fever. <laughs> it's awful. I like running through the scalding sand and bare feet and getting to the ocean. I see. I don't do that because I have Crocs because I'm an adult. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Is that what Crocs mean? That you're an adult? Wear Crocs to the beach. Oh. How dare you throw shade on me? For not having Crocs. My Crocs are hot pink, and I will say that I have never seen anyone over the age of 10 wearing the same shoes. Alex has, <laughs> like, like you've seen the sparkly ones that she has, Yeah, right? sparkle ones are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, so we're here to talk about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, chapter Oh, is two. that what we're here to talk about? Oh, my yep, God. Yeah, the Peck of Owls. Zach, I asked you to come on this chapter because it's a bit of a shit show. It which is. It definitely you is. Give those, you give the harder chapters to your friends because they love you no matter what. <laughs> Um, Also, because I did want to make sure that, uh, you know, we had a new guest on last week, Bayana from Black Nerds Create. She was so, so fucking cool. But I wanted to make sure that when we came back into our new season, we very quickly reestablished our brand. And I think that you, Zach, just fit right in with the tone of the restricted section here, especially with a slapstick chapter like this one. Why, thank you so much. I don't know whether to be offended or uh, um, incredibly uh, grateful for the compliment. Why not both? Yeah. Both. A little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> you listened to the last episode, but just as a reminder, uh, the last chapter ended with Harry banishing the Dementors. Dur- Dudley Dursley is on the ground, like w- whimpering or whatever. And Mrs. Arabella Fig comes up and is like, don't put your wand away. Oh, I'm going to kill that Mundungus Fletcher. So then the beginning of this chapter is Mrs. Arabella Fig going don't put your wand away i'm going to kill that mundungus fletcher like (laughs) at length she's like harry don't you dare fucking put that shit away because i listen i got nothing all right i got nothing (laughs) she's like i'm not going down this way i listen the word muggle wasn't offensive enough they had to find a different slur to add on to muggle and that's what i am i am a further slur yeah (laughs) 
Squib just sounds so ugly. It's such. She an... seems so well adjusted, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's an old biddy. She's lived her best life. I mean, maybe not. She has a lot of cats, and she walks around with house shoes. But she's like one of those people that doesn't at this point do, wouldn't even want a relationship or a friend even she like loves the life that she's created around herself and she's just comfortable yeah. in that and that's it very comfortable mm-hmm. well and like you know she might not have had a real purpose in the magical world without you know her looking over harry all these years so maybe she enjoys being connected in that way yeah i love it she's like i'm i'm a squib i can't do anything. Um, she's like ranting and ranting. I don't think Harry is saying anything. But she is talking about how Mundungus is like was supposed to be on watch, but he apparently dis- is the one who just separated outside Harry's house. He like heard a crack and he was like, what's that? <laughs> and it was like it was the crack was like Mundungus like like fucking off to to some like estate sale or some shit like <laughs> I think, well, I think he was going to make a deal because these cauldrons are stolen. They're, yeah. Listen, they're a hot commodity, okay? Hot, yeah. You can't wait on a, on a deal like that. I love that she's mocking him and she says like, oh yeah, cauldrons that fell off the back of a, what is it? That fell <laughs> off the back of a truck or something like that? <laughs> I can't that's, that's the code. That's, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. The, the universal code for uh, I stole these things. Zach, you know that episode of Bob's Burgers where the toilet falls off the back of the truck and Gene finds it in the woods and he's like, this toilet is mine now. Knock, knock. Who's there? Botany. Botany who? Botany good toilets lately. (laughs) Ha ha, I get it. Did you like that? I have a million of them. I literally like watched that episode four days ago. (laughs) I'm realizing now that I've fallen so deep down the like Bob's Burgers as background noise rabbit hole that like. I am always within 20 days of seeing whatever episode you reference to me. I completely relate. And I've actually spent the summer doing a bit of a tolerance break for a Bob's detox Burgers. detox for Bob's Burgers. Um, I, watched, I watched the whole... This is not the Bob's Burgers podcast. Um, but I watched the whole series from front to end because the 13th season had just ended. Or the 12th. I'm confused already. Um and then the movie came out in June, so I watched the whole thing, uh, watched the movie, and that now it's... Except for when I got COVID, uh, I was allowed to watch Bob's Burger. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to. I was also allowed to drink soda and eat Cheez-Its when I had COVID. Yeah. You know, you just do certain things when you're sick. Anyway, that's not you what this podcast take care is of about. So, so, but, but I do want to... You can cut this if you want. I think it's really interesting watching the first season or two of Buzz Burgers because they were still trying to figure out their tone. They were like still being like edgy and they had the occasional like off color joke where it's like. Oh my God, I so prefer it. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I so prefer the early episodes, including the Comic Sans credits. No regrets. (laughs) All right, well, welcome to the new Bob's Burgers podcast that used to be the Harry Potter podcast. I recently recently read a quote from the creator, Lauren Burchard. I've actually never said that name out loud. Um, Lauren Burchard, Burchard, saying that when he started the show, he had no intention of children watching it, and then he learned that children were watching it. So that's why each season gets, like, milder and milder. Interesting. He was like, oh, fuck, I have a responsibility to these kids. Interesting. We we started watching it with um, my stepkids who at the time were, yeah. I mean, they're in their teens now, but they were like, you know, maybe eight, nine or something like that. And I thought it was, they're pretty much allowed to watch. Just barely appropriate. Yeah. 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 Like, it, and I feel like when it wasn't appropriate, it was uh, like, it went over their heads. You know, it wasn't something that. Or, or it's like, so there's that, there's that one line where like some, oh, I'm so sorry. This is a Bob's Burgers podcast. Now. <laughs> There's that one line where someone, where Gene says that he's like one of Bob's daughters and someone's like, well, he's not a girl, is he? And Gene's like, tell that to my vagina. And like, it's like, that's really off color, but in a way that's like so ridiculous that it's, it's almost like not inappropriate anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It comes sure. all the way back around the other yeah. side. Um, so anyway, speaking of vaginas, um, Madungus Fletcher, mm-hmm. uh, he was uh, not, he was not at his post. Um, so then... Mrs. Fig starts screaming at Dudley, which is a little bit fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Gotta say. It's yeah, it is. But she, much like the narrative, is extremely fat phobic. And she's like, get up, you fat piece of shit, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and really like, what she says. She says, you great fat lump or something like that, which is the same yeah. thing as fat piece of shit. 
So here's the thing. Is Dudley fat? Yes. Is that what makes him a bad person? No. No. <laughs> this is no, my he's sticking a bully. point. This is my sticking point with Dudley too, is it's like obviously we all love to see Dudley take a fat L. No no intention to tie <laughs> thematic things there together. A really fat L. Oh my god. We all love to see Dudley take an L, but like there's plenty to work with with Dudley. Like, there's plenty to make fun of. In fact, I think Harry spends most of the chapter, like, well, maybe the last chapter. Harry gets really sassy. Like, super fucking sassy. Harry's like, like, fucking fight me, bitch. Sassier than I've ever seen Daniel Radcliffe get as Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, and he's Yeah, he's like just commenting on Dudley's uh, intelligence. He's saying things like, oh, you know, dates, those are like things on a calendar or like shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Dudley, because like, I really feel for him because he is so a product of the way he was raised. We don't know anything about him. We don't know if he it, if he does struggle in school or if he tries or if he has a learning disability. Like we don't know we don't know anything about him. So like I feel like Harry constantly implying that he's like dumb might be real, you know? Maybe yeah. he really, really struggles. Yeah, well, it certainly doesn't seem like the family puts that much pride into being smart or into schoolwork. It's it's mostly about how much space you take up and, like, how much power you have over p- other people. So, in my mind, I don't I don't think that Dudley would think it's that important to, to do well in school or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Even if he could, but... These are definitely the kind of parents who, if their kid was failing, they would call the teacher and be like, what are you doing wrong? Yes, for sure. It's like, wow, your kid is a bully. So that's the thing. When we want to talk shit about Dudley, we don't call him fat. We don't call him dumb. What we do call him is a bully because that's objective. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny that all through this book, all the bullies are, you know, the bullies all get their due and stuff like that. But their due tends to be people just bullying them back. A lot of the time. Yeah. Like, oh, we'll get to that <laughs> when um, our bully gets abducted and sent into the woods. Yes. By a tribe of men. Yeah. In a, yeah. With a, a, with a, a presumably gigantic schlong. I don't like that <laughs> scene at all, even though I should, you know, like, I think the idea is to feel. Uh, Vindication. Catharsis. Yes. At yeah. That point, I don't it, like that it's a huge all. relief to get them out of that scene, but you don't feel good about what happens to Umbridge. But anyway, <laughs> uh, check back in eight months. <laughs> they try to get Dudley up off the ground, but like he won't get up. Have y'all ever had a drunk, a friend who was much larger than you and way too drunk? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Zach. I don't know if you have many friends that are like very large compared to you because you're like six foot four. So the thought that comes to mind instantly is uh, that friend of yours at uh, at your party that one night that Ooh. just would not get up. Like, hmm. oh my, oh Drew, Drew, it was like partner oh God, was my, like on top of him, like smacking him repeatedly, I, and he just would not. Budge. I've been friends. One of my dearest oldest friends, Drew. We met like the first week. We were in the same freshman dorm, and I've been I've gotten drunk with this man three thousand times. Like I've gotten drunk with this man. More than possibly anyone else on Earth. And I've seen all the dumb shit he does. I've seen him fall asleep spooning a fire pit because we went camping and he didn't bring a jacket or a sleeping bag or a tent. <laughs> like, I've seen him. I've seen him do some dumb. I've seen him go to bed really drunk, wake up, go downstairs, get a glass of water, take it upstairs, go to sleep, wake up really drunk, go downstairs, get a second glass of water, go back upstairs. And drink until there was like them. eight. Gla- yes. <laughs> until there was like eight glasses of water. Okay, and then we, <laughs> he was at a party at my house, and he passed passed out dead on the couch. He was d- dead to the world, which happens sometimes when you drink too much. And understandably, Zach was like, should we call an ambulance? I was like, I'm concerned. <laughs> his his fiance was slapping his face, and ultimately, Haley just walked up very primly with a glass of cold water and handed it very, very politely to Rachel, Drew's fiance, and Rachel was like, thank you, and poured it in his face, and that's how we got him up. <laughs> oh my gosh. So shout out to Haley on that one. <laughs> Zach, you were right to be concerned. I just happen to know that Drew is indestructible. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, that was Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> well, Drew, Drew is only like 5'9 and 170 pounds. Like, somebody could get him somewhere, but Dudley's down, and Harry... Harry, po- Harry Potter has to grab him and like, I mean, 
carry him. His he's like dead weight. Here, I couldn't do it. I would leave him. Yeah. Or you would I was trying to figure out, like, calculate, like, whether that would be even possible for him to yeah. fully carry him. So I was like, oh, he must be, like, kind of pulling his own weight. But then she kept making, um, this book kept saying that uh, he kept, like, his feet were dragging as though he were not walking, he was not walking at all. Yeah. If you needed to move someone who was, like, this much bigger than you, you would have to do, like, the arms crossed, like, drag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the drag. I'd be like, hey, Miss Fig, get the fuck over here and grab a, grab an arm, or grab a leg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll drag him over as bumpy shit as we can, <laughs> as we can find. Plus, she, she's like, don't put your wand away, again, while he's holding an entire human body. She's like, <laughs> actually, don't put so your wand annoying. away either. He sprouts his third arm and grabs yeah. his wand. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good now. <laughs> Mary, I heard you stumble a little bit because you started to talk about the author and then you pivoted and you said like the book. Uh-huh. Um, so I I would like to uh, hold on just real quick. I have to pull this up. I have a picture on my phone that I might have to run and get of the text. <laughs> Wait, I swear to God, is this was that you, Zach? Were you the one who sent me that message? What about Joanne? I did. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I don't know morning. why I thought I thought. You know what my brain just did? I just went <laughs> looking because I chat with Zach, the host of Belated Binge. I chat with him like kind of regularly and I was chatting with him today. So I my brain confused Zach's and was like this other Zach made this joke. So for season five, we are calling her Joanne <laughs> because you can you can say it. It's first of all, bitch. First of all, bitch, if you're such a feminist, don't. Hide your lady ass first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lady second ass of all, first name. <laughs> second of all, imagine, imagine if you were saying something to her face. That's what you would call her. You'd oh, be yeah. like, Joe Ann, are you fucking kidding me? I'd be like, everybody lay one on me. I'd be like, none of us think that sex isn't real, Joanne. That's not how mm-hmm. it works. Mary, your turn. <laughs> Joanne just that sounds like the name she deserves. And I am so yeah. sorry to any other Joannes. I can't think of any that I know, but I'm sure there's plenty of nice ones out there. But like, uh, I, I know one. Her name's Joanne Fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call her Joanne Fabric. I just think like you can say it while dripping it with as much sarcasm as you can muster. Like it really the only upper limit to how much sarcasm you can put into Joanne is like how sarcastic you want to be that day. <laughs> So here's been like the progression. So we started out by calling her like so lovingly and tenderly JK Rowling because none of us were on Twitter and we didn't know she was a bad person. And then we quickly escalated to calling her she who must not be named. That's the, giving her way too much fucking credit. It's giving her way too much credit. And then there was that one season where we, or maybe it was only a couple episodes because it's kind of annoying, where we called her her. her. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't know if our listeners remember that. That came from a drinking game that I looked up for Independence Day, the movie. <laughs> the drinking game said that every time that the president's daughter came onto the screen, everyone needed to scream her. <laughs> What? That's so <laughs> random. It's so That's fucking so weird. funny because she's so sweet and little. Like, there's I no know. reason to do that. <laughs> her? <laughs> So that's how we got yeah. that for, for Joey. And then we Taylor graced us with her brain gem, Roldemort, obviously. Should have mm-hmm. seen that one coming. Um, and, and that then, bitch. I like that bitch as well. That bitch. That bitch is a good one. But this season, I'm going for the full Joanne. I love it. I'm honored. You honor <laughs> me by using my <laughs> sarcastic quip. It's um this is part of our elaborate like uh I'm like uh guest right ritual. I'm like I'm I'm like hosting you and I'm like, oh my guest on my podcast, well, to show you my good graces, like I will use this idea you brought to me. Like a good DM. Like I was like <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving it back because you know you get to the end of a joke and you're like, was that good? Was that too much? Did that one make any sense? But your friends will always no, that's not true. Sometimes they don't keep going no, no, with no. their jokes. Sometimes they just look Every at you. Every once in a while, like, Alex will just I'll I'll say something that I think is really funny on my cabbages, and Alex will just hang me out to dry with her silence, <laughs> and it's palpable. And those that's are the jokes. That's so fucking funny. And honestly, in podcast format, it's even funnier than those IRL. jokes. Uh, I cut unless the silence is so funny that I can put crickets. In, in, <laughs> into the soundtrack. Yeah, I want everyone to know that like I've never. Whenever there's whenever there is like a dead silence after a joke, I never cut 
the time on that. Like I, I let it ride. So it's how good. people learn. It's I, how people learn to do better next time. You know, <laughs> it's always me. Oh. <laughs> I remember, uh, I don't remember what episode it was, but I, I gave, like, this really dramatic joke, and then I was like, uh... And Brooke was like, oh, I'm so sorry, were we supposed to laugh <laughs> after, like, ten minutes, ten, no, not ten minutes, ten seconds of just dead air? <laughs> I love my friends. They keep me... When that review said all the women are subtly mean to each other, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So we're just, uh, Zach, you're safe, because you're not a woman. <laughs> That you know of. No, I'm not a woman. Tell that to my vagina. Tell that to my... That's what I should have said. Tell that to my vagina. <laughs> okay, so they're like uh, hobbling about at uh, home. Mm-hmm. So we learn that Mrs. Fig has been tasked by Dumbledore to watch at, over Harry, but never reveal her relation to the world of magic. Mrs. Fig, he well, he's like, I shouldn't I put my wand away? Like, shouldn't I not be doing magic? And she's like, it's. she says something funny, like... Uh, the, the she says something some quirky little phrase but that i don't remember but she's like it's too fucking late for that man Mm -hmm. is what is the gist of it yeah yeah. um you're you're gonna be in trouble so then (laughs) so then mrs fig screams mundungus fletcher's name into the wind and he appears (laughs) so good which is some super secretive like squib power (laughs) squibs can't do magic but they can summon wizards I read that I read that part is like she already knows that he's like she because she stops mid sentence and then yells Mm -hmm. Mundungus Fletcher I'm going to kill you. So I was like oh she's so practiced at at least seeing people apparate and disapparate that she knows someone's about to apparate. Oh I fully read that as I'm so mad I can't finish a sentence. Well y'all might be right because I was going to ask how do you think she knew because the only thing that we know is just that sound of the crack which happens after she says that so. Maybe, maybe like, because right. ma- Harry hasn't been around much apparition, so maybe it's, like, before there's, like, a lightning strike near you, like, the air smells electric or something. Everything gets so, still. Like, I kept thinking throughout this entire chapter, like, what wh- what's the breakdown here? Because we have a lot of wizarding folk that live in the muggle world just in secret. There, there's tons of them. Mm-hmm. But for what I know, the only wizarding village like village we've ever seen is like like what hogsmeade and then a few Roger's others hollow is do we do we think that like there's just a waiting list of wizards that wiz- witches and wizards that want to live in like quaint little like villages full of magic i feel folk? like i feel like there just must be other places to live you'd like there think, have to be other neighborhoods you think someone would mention them ever don't forget about all the recent graduates who live in the apartments on top of the shops in Diagon Alley. Ah, okay. That's maybe, what, like, 40 more people? Because Diagon yeah. Alley is, like, in my mind, it's, like, 100 yards long. It's, like... <laughs> it's one alley. <laughs> yeah, it's literally one alley that all the kids in England get their magic supplies from. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, maybe do some maybe do some world building, Joanne. Maybe do a little bit of world building. Hey, Joanne. I would love to speak with you about your world building issues. Yeah. yeah. There's so much world building hey, that happened oh, after we're already deep in the world. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. And part of that is okay, if I was writing a series this long and it got more complex, I understand that. But like also it, it's just not good. <laughs> She's just also, like, how do we never hear from a wizard painter? I'm going to die on this hill. These <laughs> paintings that move around are so interesting. I want to know how they're made. I want to know how they're made. Oh, <laughs> it's just a spell. In some some fandoms, like Star Wars, for example, you can make a show like The Mandalorian or Boba Fett, where it's just, oh look, these characters are just in this place that called Star Wars. Star Wars is a place that you can set other adventures in. Mm-hmm. But Harry Potter, it feels like the second you go, like within a hundred, like a hundred yards out from Har- from Harry directly, like the story just the simulation breaks down. There's like nothing else out there, but whatever is around Harry at that exact moment. Man. Yeah. That's such a good, a good way of putting it. I've never thought about it. Like yeah. That. Yeah. He's got a very narrow scope, let's say. Mm. So Monogus Fletcher is here and Mrs. Fig is screaming and also explaining what happened during his absence. 
He's like, but it was a good deal. And she starts hitting him. I guess I didn't write this down, but I, I assume with her purse that yeah. makes cat food noises. Yeah. Which let me tell you something. I would love to tell you something. I want to talk about I want to talk about the stereotype of the cat lady because <laughs> because I have I know Mrs. Fig is supposed to have like kind of a lot of cats. Do we ever get a number? What's kind of a lot? Is four kind of a lot? I mean, is are, is the exact phrase kind of a lot? I don't know how many it says, but the <laughs> implication is that she has many cats. I feel I like think, six to eight is like a crazy cat lady amount of cats. She, why on earth should she have just loose cat food in her purse? That is yeah. a nonsense thing to do to a character. Why do that to her? It's the same reason why that one wizard from Lord of the Rings just has like bird shit like coming out the. That's Radagast, and that <laughs> I that's in the Hobbit first of all, and the, let's just say in the books he doesn't have bird shit on his face. Well, I mean, um, actually, in the books, I don't. He has, doesn't have bird shit on his face in the books. God, what a character choice to make. I'm uh, deeply sorry to everyone for exposing myself as a fake nerd. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Zach's like, first of all, I love bird shit. <laughs> I do not love bird shit. I spend a lot of time trying to reinforce. But have you ever had it on your face? I'm, uh, probably at some point. <laughs> and just not know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Roy just like lifts his tail and drops a fat deuce on my nose and goes, you're a wizard, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but real talk, I don't think birds can drop fat deuces, because isn't it all just, like, pretty liquidy? Aww. No, they can definitely drop fat deuces. You don't wanna, oh, really? You don't want to You don't want to dissect right. this with me. Yeah, okay. There is a thing <laughs> called... I would a, love to dissect this. Let's get back to the chapter. There is a thing called a morning poop. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, no. <laughs> have, Zach, have you ever read The Guardians of Gahul? I've, um, I've seen the movie, but I've never read the book. Okay, so I read the entire Guardians of Gahul series, which is early middle grade. That's for a sixth grader. True. And I read the entire thing when I was, like, 28 because my <laughs> brother was into it. And it's extremely good. But, like, uh, the, so uh, owls yarp. They, like, spit up pellets. Yeah. They don't, they don't really, like, shit like that. So I forget, like, what their... Are their enemies, like, maybe hawks or eagles? I don't really remember anything. But they, like, call other birds wet poopers that's like their slur <laughs> instead of mud blood they're like those fucking wet poopers over there oh my god that's so weird disgusting uh, you would you would like it just because it's like a ridiculous fantasy with a lot of bird talks <laughs> there's a D D module called humblewood where you like your character race so to speak is like a little woodland creature and you play like a little like red wall style like fantasy Aww. adventure have you read red wall i have not uh -huh. Alex loves those books. I have not read them. Have you read them, Mary Payne? I read them back in like fourth grade. Yeah, I'm I'm just asking because it came up in book club yesterday. And I also so when I was a kid, I was full full Matilda status where I would go to the library, get a chunk of books. It didn't really matter. They were all just from the children's fantasy section. I just would. So I, I think I read like most classic children's fantasy. And I'm pretty sure I read Redwall, but I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I remember I read those because do y'all remember? Did y'all have the accelerated reader program? I don't remember. I'm way too old. Is that where you go to a Pizza Hut and if you read five books, you could oh, that was Book It. I didn't have that. That was Book It. That was uh, another one. But accelerated reader. I don't know if this was like all schools or just our school or something. But you would read books and you take a quiz on it, and if you did well, then you got a certain amount of points. But you got way more points if it was a really big book. And so for some reason, that was all I wanted to do. I read like Red Wall and Little Women and like, I don't even know if I comprehended half of that, what that was, but I wanted those points. Yeah, I, don't, I remember having to do reading logs for school, which that's like the only thing in my life that my mom has ever given me a break on. She would just blindly sign them. She's like, I know you read, bitch. I'm not going to check on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't remember if I ever did anything like that. Mm. I, I never really read a whole lot of... I mean, I, so in middle school, I had a very long bus ride to and from school because I went to a magnet school for art. So I would just sit at, in the bus for 45 minutes to an hour every day to and from, and I probably read 30 Goosebumps books uh, on that bus and stuff like that. So Goosebumps is what's up. Yeah. I think I should do a Goosebumps podcast. That's middle grade that's not noble, right? There you go. I love those books. You're right. He's referring again to 
book club. Hey, join the Patreon. You can join the book club. You'll know what we're talking about. For as little as a dollar a month. (laughs) For as little as a dollar a month, you can join our Patreon. Nope. You can join our Discord server and uh, then we'll tell you in the book club. Well, yeah. It's a lot of things. For as little as a dollar a month, you can join our Patreon, our Discord, and our book club all at the same time. Whoa. That's 25 cents a week. Tell me more. Oh, I actually would love to, because (laughs) if we get five new patrons between now and October 21st, Zach, you and me, and maybe some other people, hopefully some other fucking people, are going to be doing a live stream reading of My Immortal for our patrons. That has to happen. We're going to get so drunk. It has to happen. It has to happen. It's cool. It's going to be extremely fun. Um, so if you have been thinking about signing up for our Patreon, now is a great time because, you know, obviously everyone wants to see that. Mm-hmm. We're at least halfway there. I, I can't remember if we have two or three new patrons. So we are uh, <laughs> sort of halfway there. Um, so please, please sign up for our Patreon. Uh, anyway, where the fuck were we? Um, Mrs. Fig is yelling at Mundungus Fletcher. He's like, it was a good deal. And she's like, you know, it's a good fucking deal. You get to go to Dumbledore and you get to explain to him what you did. And he's like, fine. (laughs) Anything is better than being screamed at by you. I wonder what he told him. I wonder like what level of honesty he gave him. Because like, imagine Harry never has to do this. Imagine having to go to Dumbledore and tell him you failed. You fucked up. Well, so here's the big twist, right? He bought those cauldrons from Dumbledore. <laughs> oh, my God. Dumbledore was the, the shady dealer that he bought the cauldrons from. Dumbledore is like, a bunch of cauldrons <laughs> fell off the back of a truck, dude. I need you to get over here quick. Right I need now. you to get over here and take care of him. If it's like, but I'm watching your boy. And he's like, he'll be fine. <laughs> I've abandoned him so many times. He's always fine. He's going to die anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come back. Yikes. Yeah. Don't worry. It's fine. Sorry, I'm texting, but I am texting for podcast reasons. It's like related to podcast stuff. Is that allowed? No. How dare you? How dare you? Um. Well, I was going to talk about how different Mundungus Fletcher looks than how they cast him in the movies. Yes. I don't even remember him in the movies. I was reading this a lot to Sean, and when I was reading his description, Sean said, Arthur Weasley, and I was like, ew, <laughs> no. <laughs> because they're both ginger, you know? Right, right. What, is, is Mundungus Fletch, like, Fletcher, is Fletcher, Fletch? Fletcher. Fletcher. Is he, like, hot in the movies? I don't remember. No, he, no, like, in this one, he... He's like Danny DeVito. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. That is a great description. Yeah, he's just, like... So like, hot. So you're so so he is hot. Is <laughs> super hot. hot. <laughs> super sexy, yeah. Um, but in this one he's a ginger and it says he has long stra- straggly ginger hair and bloodshot baggy eyes that gave him the doleful look of a basset hound. And I can't not picture like a completely bald top of the head with like long hair down just the sides. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have checked my phone. Um, I my brother works for Amazon and he's watching the Rings of Power right now, which is before <gasps> it comes out. Isn't that crazy? Whoa. They let him watch it early. I thought they had released the first episode or two. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I just googled it to confirm, and it said September second, but I might not know. Oh. I think. I mean, I, would... maybe. Um. Anyway, I'll pay attention to this podcast for the rest of the recording. Don't worry about it. Um. I'm. I'm like fully committed now. I've, I'm actually flipping my phone early, over. T- Tina, you, you might not know this, but you're not. You're not listening to the restricted section. You're actually on a Zoom call. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. my God. That explain. That explains yeah, yeah, so yeah. much because usually when I'm just listening to podcasts, uh-huh. I'm walking about, scooping the litter boxes because I'm a crazy cat lady. <laughs> With your cat food in your purse. That's yeah, right. that's why it jiggles. Jingles? That's why it crinkle. Uh, There's no word that goes good there. It says clanking in here. To describe the sound of cat food in a purse. It seems like someone who like has never owned a cat wrote this like bit. Like, oh, I bet if, if you own enough cats, you just find cat food cans just in the couch and <laughs> <laughs> under the okay. cabinets. Okay, okay, but I do remember that one time... I don't remember how it came up, but like, I was like, Brooke, what's in your pockets? And she was like, oh, dog treats. And she just had them in her pockets. She said, if the dog knows that there is the potential for a treat at any moment, he behaves better mm-hmm. than, than if, so like, she almost never gave the treat to him. <laughs> it was just there. <laughs> so I think a treat 
is more likely than cat kibble. Uh, they call that a Skinner's box. Fun fact. What? what? Skinner's box is a uh, experiment that was done. I'm not going to talk about the actual experiment because I don't remember all the details. But it's it's used in video games all the time. Basically, the leveling system in any RPG that you like. Oh, you just get to that new level, and oh, you get all this cool stuff. Like, it's this thing that is incrementally placed, but somewhat random. I think it involves a chimpanzee hitting a button and getting a treat maybe 20% of the time he hits the button, and he will just sit there and hit the button over and over again because oh, of yeah. that Eventually. eventual yeah. gratification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That makes perfect sense. Mm. Uh, where are we? Mrs. Fig leaves uh, Harry and the other one, uh, Dudley, on... There's <laughs> the other the one. <laughs> That's what we should call Joanne from now on. The other one. I, we're having a great time, but like we need to go. We haven't even seen the first owl yet. Yeah, and nothing really. <laughs> I mean, a lot happens in this chapter, but like nothing like really big. And yet we're still not making it through. So <laughs> <laughs> we just keep getting extremely derailed and that's fine. That means we like each other. OK, that's how that's how the podcast listeners know that we're authentically friends. A lot of owls get really uh, come and go and Uncle Vernon gets really purple for some reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the end purple. of the chapter. No, um, oh my god, Zach, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of The Restricted Section. <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, anyway, you can find me at now. Um, so, you, this is like a, a situation that I always get into where like I, I'm watching like a, like a romantic comedy and like that big, like something happens, right? Like, oh, the, the, the person's ex-girlfriend really wants to get him back. So she like almost like almost forces herself on him and then at that exact moment his the, his squeeze of the movie like walks in and mm-hmm. she's like oh i can't believe you do that and she runs away and he has I to like that movie two days ago he has to like chase her down and like apologize to her even though like he was practically assaulted like he did nothing wrong here and like instead of having the adult sense to like sit down and be like okay no this is the situation this is what happened this is what you saw this is the context He's just like, oh, I'm sorry. I promise, I'll never, I'll never do anything like that again. That's what it feels. This entire fucking book, because Harry is just like given none of the benefit of the doubt ever, and it's so infuriating to me. It's like I'm starting to remember why I was so angry reading this book. And he, yeah. even with Miss Fig and with Vernon, when he's like questioning him about it, he starts to say, "It wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. Here, what happened?" But he never gets to that. And it's so infuriating mm-hmm. the whole time. I hate stuff like that when, like, they could just communicate for a second. And I know that's yeah, yeah. N- that's not a, a lot of books rely right. on that. I, <laughs> I really hate that. A lot of movies rely on that, too. And I hate mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Too. But I get, like, that the Dursleys are not the listening t- type, especially not to Harry. I yeah. understand that. But sure. there are so many moments where he wasn't really cut off. You know, like, he really could have continued talking and explained that it wasn't yeah, his yeah. fault. Well, I think the point in this scene, and this is, I think, totally fair, is that I think Harry just knew that regardless of anything he said, Dudley pointing his finger at Harry is 100% more credible than anything Harry is going to say to the Dursleys. True. Just true. because they're like, that's my boy, my Duddykins, my Dudder Wudders. That's my son. My, du- my, my Duddy my Wuddy. Boy. Okay, okay, wait. Okay, let's get there. Let's get there. Harry rings the doorbell. To his home. Can we talk about that? <laughs> he probably doesn't have a key. He has Dudley. Oh, he's not going to go through Dudley's pockets, I guess. Like, True. I would, my large, drunk friend, yeah, I would yeah. go through her pockets. Oh, to answer my question from 45 minutes ago, I do. I, I have had many large, drunk friends that I couldn't quite handle. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to put them down. Just got to put them, put them down in a spot and leave them there. Yeah. They'll be fine. She's all right. <laughs> sounded like you were saying, like, you got you to gotta put them down. You just... You take, take him out of no, the picture. You have, to, you have to put him in a spot and like maybe <laughs> depending on out. how drunk they are, maybe like give them an activity, you know? You have to take them out for breakfast the next morning because they're gonna be hungover. <laughs> um Aunt Petunia answers the door and she obviously immediately starts freaking out about Dudley. Dudley does the old vomitus maximus. Yeah. This part drives me nuts. Like <laughs> I know they're really worried about their their sweet little baby boy. But, like, the fact that he vomits, and then they all walk over it, and then no one yeah. cleans it up this entire chapter, I can't stop thinking about it. It's still there. It's still there the whole time, and they're it's sitting down there. at the kitchen table, and it's still there on the doormat. 
The Dursleys seem like like uh, Adam Sandler in Big Daddy. They're just going to put a big newspaper over it. And it's just going to be <laughs> that for the rest of the book. Uh, disgusting. <laughs> so well, and yo, literally. OK, OK. Barf is so gross that if, it, 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 you know, nobody likes barf. And, and nobody wants to clean it. That's for damn sure. Especially since it specifically said that it went on the rug. It said it went on the mat, right? Yeah. And if I were Harry in this moment, I have already done magic. I am already in trouble. I'm using magic to clean up that bar. Yeah. Like I'm not even gonna fuck with it. I don't want. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to look at it. I would use magic through this whole part. I'd be like, my life yeah, is you're, over. Yeah, you're at the fuck it. I love the energy that Harry has, though, where he just pulls the wand out and he's like, guess what? I got nothing left to lose, fuckers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so then, like, and Petunia's like, Vernon, and then there's, I think, some fat phobic language when Vernon is, like, approaching. They're asking Dudley, who did this? Who did this to you? And Harry's like, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, But then Dudley's (laughs) like, him there's only one him because they don't ever fucking say his name Mm. they're terrible and then obviously they like turn on him harry yeah harry's like i didn't do it and they're like we've never believed a word you've said before so why would we start now yeah yeah yeah. enter an owl (laughs) it's the name of the chapter we got there i've been i've been recording for about for about 45 50 minutes (laughs) we We got to the first owl owl. (laughs) And then, right, the Ministry of Magic and everybody Harry knows just starts blowing up his phone with tweets, baby. <laughs> oh my just God. Keep tweeting up a storm. Tweets? Like birds? Cause, tweet? Yeah, because they're out. Are you this, doing it on purpose? That's the joke that I was making. Yeah, oh my God. Zach, yeah. you're a genius. <laughs> the birds, sometimes they tweet. And, you know, there's Enter. this thing called Twitter, it's a social media app. You probably didn't get it, Christina. Enter Vernon. So. <laughs> No, I never get anything. That's well, part of the part of the charm. Vernon was sliding into those DMs. Sliding into those DMs is when you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke, and my joke is: Enter Vernon, pursued by an owl. Because there's that Shakespeare line about being pursued by a bear. You feel me? <laughs> yes. The owl drops an envelope at Harry's feet and then leaves again. It's on business. It's got stuff to do. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uncle Vernon starts screaming very helpfully. Uh huh. And he's like, no more owls. And the owls are like, cool, heard. I won't come in. Just your own business, man. I'm not here to enjoy myself. I promise. <laughs> okay, so Harry reads the letter, which very calmly explains that he has been expelled from Hogwarts for doing underage magic out of school. <laughs> Mafalda Hopkirk is like, hello, I would love to inform you. <laughs> it's just done, like a done deal. Yeah. Like, your house is about to be stormed by special agents. We're going to break your wand. It's totally cool. <laughs> It's wild. The breaking the wand thing is so like. Yeah, they won't even just take your wand and hold it. Like you're not you're not being punished for a little bit of time. You're being punished forever for one thing that you did underage. That's insane. It is uh, extremely wild. But that's also just kind of like how it goes. Mm. That's like how that's how this this Harry never is in control of anything. Honestly, like if you ask me. Harry's not in control of anything ever at any time until the climax of the book. And then he suddenly becomes in control of everything. Mm. And that's where we give him all his credit. We're on page like 18. He's not in control. (laughs) They're like, we're going to break your wand, bitch. And you can't come to school anymore. And he's like, well, I guess I need to go on the lamb. Like, (laughs) he's like, well, I guess I'm going to murder the Dursleys and then take (laughs) off into the, into the wilderness. Harry's like, this is it. I probably should have had a plan for this. Okay. But, but like, it's funny it, when you're rereading it, because you know that there's like four more owls after this, <laughs> but probably reading it the first time, it was very shocking. I don't remember. Do y'all remember? Hey, like, there's not even any kind of like hope that Harry. Oh, maybe that we'll figure. He's like, oh, well, all right, I got that's it then. I'm not going to Hogwarts anymore. Yep. <laughs> I feel like it was really shocking at first when that happened, but then as soon as he, as soon as the next owl comes in, I was like, oh, okay. Other people are on his side. It's okay. They know what happened. Yeah. He's going to be fine. He's not going to be expelled. Yeah. So Vernon... Okay, wait. Okay, so... If, Harry's like, I'm going to make a run for it. Vernon tries to stop him, and Harry's like, I'm expelled. I'll jinx anyone. I don't give a shit. <laughs> There's a crack, and another owl is colliding with the window that they shut because Vernon said no more owls, and all the owls were like, cool, homie. Sounds great. <laughs> Do owls travel at, like, s- like hypersonic speeds or something? 
I can't with this. I, <laughs> yeah. Another yeah. thing Sean was asking me when we were reading, and I was like, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Because it seems like like owls leave their destination and then they just like arrive like three minutes later at the place they're going to. When when I first read this and I saw the crack before they explained that it's just the owl running into the window, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Like uh, some owls apparate. That makes way the more sense. The owls apparate. I was <laughs> the same thing. Which uh, still doesn't make sense, I guess. But you could technically give an owl a port key. Technically, mm. you could put one mm. in an owl's hand, and if the owl was trained to be cool with that and like reorient themselves, they could do it. Is, mm. is there a size limit to how small you can make a port key? I'm I don't know, they don't address it canon for sure. Because, like, I feel like I would just have a whole suitcase full of little pebbles that take me to different places. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's a great that. idea, but you'd have to label them all so clearly. Oh, yeah, this is like. I did this with with the uh, with book club last night, where I just like I love taking magic systems with like loose rules and saying how far can I bend those rules before the whole like system collapses in on itself. Yeah. Um. In fucking, we have a bonus episode in March. Okay, this is like I planned this far ahead that comes out on Pi Day, so we're doing a bonus episode about math and Harry Potter. And I just started a Google Doc called math and Harry Potter. And, and I wrote down the distances that owls fly. Cause we need to talk about that in our math bonus episode. Yes. <laughs> yes. The new owl brings a letter from Arthur Weasley. Uh, he's like, Harry Dumbledore is working on the issue. Don't even worry about it. Stay right where you are. Don't do anything else. Don't give up your wand. But what he doesn't say is what to do if the government comes and demands his wand at what, to what extent do you not surrender your wand? That's the question. Yeah, because Harry goes mm. straight to, I guess I'm going to have to duel them to the death for my wand because yeah. Arthur, because <laughs> Mr. Weasley so told me to. Yeah. Well, in the previous chapter, Harry was like so fucking mad that he was looking at Dudley's gang of like bullies and was like, come the fuck over here and fight me. I swear to God. Yeah, and right. they didn't. So he's just like sitting on this rage right now. So he's like, yeah, I'll run away. I don't give a shit, dude. I'll fight whoever I need to. I'm on You're the not my dad. Now. Yeah, me and my... I'm going to go become a criminal like my godfather before me. And like your son. So Vernon is like, what is happening? And Harry's like, I'm expelled, but uh, I perhaps am not expelled and it's going to be completely fine. Yeah. Uncle Vernon is like, are you fucking telling me that magicians have a government? Yeah, he's like, you guys are in the government that explains why this world is like falling apart paraphrasing he's like literally that's the only thing that wizards can do like the only job is either to be a teacher at hogwarts or work at the ministry of magic right it's true otherwise you just got to get like a you gotta be like a bicycle repairman or some shit in the <laughs> muggle world bicycle a magic no you could be a magic bicycle repair person <laughs> repair person zach listen if if in fantastic beasts they can destroy the whole fucking city and then wave their wands and have everything just rebuild themselves they can make a mint repairing stuff and just. Oh, fantastic Beasts. Join, sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> here, that's about Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> when Vernon and Petunia learn that Harry got expelled from Hogwarts for doing magic, they're like, so you did curse our son. Yeah, right. And then Dudley's, Dudley's like explaining what happened when he got attacked, except for. He has no idea what happened when he got attacked. So he's describing like feelings and his parents are extrapolating meaning from that to to frame Harry. Mm -hmm. Circumstantial evidence only. They've got their prime suspect and they're just going to like every piece of evidence they hear. It's going to be bent some way towards Harry. Yeah. When Harry, Harry's trying to like defend himself, he's like Dementors. This shit was Dementors. And then Petunia is like, oh, I know what that is is <laughs> yeah they guard the prison i love that part because it's so unexpected it's just like back and forth between vernon and harry and then it's a line that normally like as an editor i would have a problem with the fact that you don't know who speaks the correct person who's speaking the line until you read after it but in this but case it, it's like impactful in this case it works really well you gotta know the rules before you can break them <laughs> <laughs> The more you know, the sound effect comes across the screen. I love it. Vernon is actually, to give him a little bit of credit, for the first time in his life, he's ever so slightly just even trying at all to understand. 
What is a Dementor? It's like it like zooms into his head and like a little carton of milk just spills over. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying too hard. It's too hard. <laughs> And I love how many different words he has for Dementor instead of Dementor, which is like the easiest. Dementi, Dementi, Dementi what's it? Dementi what's it? Um, Winkies. Yeah, no, that's not it. That's not one of them. It's almost it's almost exactly like the nicknames they have for Dudley. D- Dementoids, I believe, is one of them. It's Dementoids. honestly, this is extremely slapsticky. You know yes. what I mean? Like it's so fucking. It's funny. The scene is funny. It's like a lot of things happening all at once. And Uncle Vernon is like, <laughs> like he's he's being very ridiculous right now. And it's very funny. But it also like it's funny. But, you know, I was talking to you about this, that I I feel like this scene almost feels like a, a like a really like worst case scenario, like coming out situation where like a kid is coming out to their parents and their parents are saying stuff like, Oh, we, we tried to squash this out of you. Like we tried to fix you. And they're like spittling and yelling. And these like Vernon willfully mispronouncing the like, cause Dementor is not a hard word. It's not a hard word. It's not difficult. Dementor. It's not hard. Like it almost feels like a parent, like willfully misgendering their kid or like yes. misusing pronouns and stuff. And I would just love to say that if, Something like that has happened to you and you've come out to your family and they reacted poorly. I would love to encourage you to reach out to us because we'll be your family now. We we will adopt anyone. We're your family now. <laughs> yes. true. Yeah, I definitely get that vibe. That's like someone who is trying to prove that they either don't approve of something or that they they just aren't a part of it. And so they um, purposely mess it up and they're like, it reminds me, this is going to sound really bad because it's about my mom, and I love my mom very much. Um, but she doesn't... <laughs> she's been on this podcast before, she, back in Chamber of She's Secrets. wonderful. <laughs> she's read these books so many times, and she just read them for the first time, like, three years ago or something like that. So she's obsessed. But um, mm-hmm. she doesn't watch TV, and the ways that she'll tell you that she doesn't watch TV are like, what do you? what is that show? Like, what is that even called? I'm like, Mom, you've definitely heard of the show Friends. You know, like, like something like that. She's, <laughs> maybe not that, but... But that kind of thing where they're like, have you seen that show that my daughter's been talking about pals? It's like or like companions. companions? Oh, what's it called again? Buddies. Yeah, buddies. Sounds silly. I don't know. <laughs> Disposable income buddies. <laughs> Their big ass apartment in New <laughs> yeah, York City. Yeah. For sure. So a third owl enters through the window. I mean, I mean, enter a third owl. I forgot that I wanted to write this like it was a play. Enter the third owl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and it's like Haley in an owl costume. Enter a third owl. She's r- running onto the stage. Uncle Vernon says, "Enough effing owls." He does. That's a f- <laughs> that's so close to the fuck word. It's yeah. so close to the fuck word. Which- he says effing, and like, if you're like, if you're ten, you're reading this, and you're like, oh my god, I know what effing means. Oh my god. See, I. I don't know that I because it's spelled out. It's not like F dash I N G. It's like E F F I N G. I'm like, is that what furries do? Do furries? <laughs> <F?"> <laughs> it's just so strange. It's such, it's like such a slang kind of sounding term for what yeah, yeah, the yeah. Dursleys normally speak in. It's so strange for them to use that. So, I I feel like this question has been answered before. What era does harry potter take place in it's we're in 1995 right now we're in 1995 okay so there is no like internet or anything like that as because I, I was like there is going to come a time in the wizarding world and honestly this it seems like a great excuse to make another movie is like how would the modern world deal with harry potter because you can't keep witches under wraps when people can just like Oh, look, I have a TikTok where I cast magic because fuck you, mom. I'm going to cast magic with like with my TikTok. Yeah. Well, like uh, for just... like when the Ford Anglia is like below the clouds and they are seen by a few muggles. That would have been just everywhere these days. Well, OK. Do you remember when I think NASA came out and was like 80 percent of UFOs? We don't know what they are or, or like whatever that I, I, I made up that statistic, but. There was a story within the last like three or five years about how we don't know what UFOs are most of the time. Yeah, and they 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 released a bunch of footage. It was the Ford Anglia. <laughs> <laughs> UFO class Ford Anglia. So I feel like 
I feel like we, it, even if it goes viral, it's like, well, that's just another UFO. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? True. I mean, there are already witches and wizards and elves and all sorts of things on TikTok that are real. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'll, you just got to believe it to achieve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if you live your life as an elf every day, I don't know why the fuck you shouldn't. Be my an question elf is, if I'm a squib, like, okay, my parents are both wizards or witches or wizard and witch. I'm I'm not here to judge. Magician. Um, they were called magicians. Yeah, magicians. Can I still like live in a cool wizarding town and like get cool magic chocolates and <laughs> collect moving paintings? Yeah, you should be part of the community. That's for sure. But probably like not because it you seems be like caretaker. it seems like wi- like it seems like magic folk are a very exclusionary group. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even the ones who aren't the the fascists and the blood purists are still mm-hmm. kind of exclusive. Yeah. They call they call non magic folk a word that sounds like a slur. It is inescapably a slur. It does have that double G yeah. that we don't like to hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's rough. That's okay. rough, buddy. Okay, so this third owl, <laughs> we're doing a great job. This third owl is revoking Harry's expulsion from Hogwarts. And he it's like, you have to come to a hearing. Consider yourself suspended. And Harry's like, great, what do you want me to do with that information? It's not like I'm just, people are just like, hey, what's your school status? And he's like, oh, suspended. It's just like P- P.S. And then another owl crashes through the windows. Like, P.P.S. Uh, P.P.P.S. <laughs> yeah. And I love that it is exact time. It says further to our letter of approximately 22 minutes ago. Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. owl could have gotten delayed a little bit. Like, how do you know it's yeah. exactly 22 minutes? Do Magic. We, do we oh, think that, that that Harry Potter is like the weird dystopian future of the Guardians of Gahul? That all the Guardians just become <gasps> messengers for the wizarding folk? Oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. So Harry, with this letter, is like, okay, well, I'm just going to go upstairs. And then, but Vernon's like, what the fuck happened to my boy, my son? My boy. My boy. So Harry, Harry does his best to explain their encounter with the Dementors. Enter the fourth owl. (laughs) (laughs) The slapstick of the owls is really, really good in this chapter. I, I love this chapter a lot. It's very fun. Like the it dialogue is, fun. is fun. Like the the tension is fun. The what the fuck is happening? It's like very. It's very fun. Yeah. Uncle Vernon starts screaming again. Obviously. It's a short note from Sirius, telling Harry, "Stay where you are," and Harry's like, "You wrote this in a letter. You know what this feels like." <laughs> Um, do you ever get, do you ever like send someone e- an email that's like, oh, hey, like an order for me to do this thing. I need this thing from you. And then they respond pretty quickly and they're like, yeah, sure. I'll do that later. And it's like, whoa, you didn't even have to answer. If you're just going to do it later this afternoon, you didn't even have to answer it right <laughs> just now. Do it. You could have just, you could just do it later. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't need this like update. It, you know what I mean? That's what it feels like. Is there is like stay put and Harry's like. Ah, like I, I know. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. Once again, the adults in Harry's life are proving to just be the most inadequate, like supportive and wonderful, and totally not <laughs> problematic people in the history of time. Sirius Black is a bad guardian. He does yeah. almost nothing right for Harry, and I will fight. I will fight someone about it. Sirius Black, good or bad? <laughs> so Harry. Finally finishes explaining, I, I was expelled for, for driving off these Dementors. Um, and then Vernon's, like, questioning him some more. And Harry starts to wonder, like, why the Dementors were there, like, uh, in his hometown, his muggle-ass hometown. He's like, Voldemort must have sent them. And Vernon's like, I've heard that name before. Cool, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like a bridge. It's like a moment where they're like, okay, wait, this is real. It's real. It's real. Voldemort must have set these Dementors. So yeah, good job, Vernon. Good job, buddy. So he Vernon gives Harry the room to explain that Voldemort has come back from his previous downfall. Very begrudgingly, I might add. Yeah. Yeah. So Uncle Vernon is like, oh my god, that's so cool. So if they're after you, then you can get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> they just kicks him out. 
He says like a lot of nasty things and he's like physically driving Harry from the kitchen. So this is why we don't have to focus so much about how overweight he is because he's simply just a bad person. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to like draw attention to things he can't control. Like but like draw attention to what to his people people's actions. You know what I mean? It yeah. seems like it it seems like Joanne thinks that if jo a character Joanne Joanne it feels like <laughs> hey, listen Joanne it feels like she just feels like if if a if a character is bad because I have written them to be bad I just have carte blanche to body shame them and do whatever else I want to do to insult them because it's all it's all above board they're a piece of shit there's a difference between a character having an opinion and the narrative having an opinion. Yes. yes. And that's the problem Absolutely. with Harry Potter. That's the problem with Harry Potter. That like, I think that's my number one problem with Harry Potter as a series is that it doesn't understand that distinction or no. it takes advantage of that distinction because there's a lot of like fat phobia. There's a lot of like misogyny. There's a lot of bullshit where it's like, if you framed this in the context of a character, it, it could be like interesting to talk about, mm -hmm. but because the narrative is taking this, prejudiced perspective like now this is bad this it, it's like not working it's the bad. omniscient narrator has a voice and that voice has an opinion and that's the problem yeah and in a lot of places the narrator of harry potter feels like harry it's it can be like a little snarky and offhanded but mm -hmm. like so what you're doing by conflating the narrator and Harry is you're making Harry like a bad dude with these kinds of observations and that sucks for your protagonist yeah 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 i totally agree I feel like I remember a lot of kids fantasy series, but just like books in general in the 90s had that kind of vibe. It was a lot of like orphans and their aunts, evil aunts or uncles were taking care of them. And they were often uh, like always like fat and lazy and, um, you know, just like selfish gluttonous. It was it was always like that. And the orphan was yeah. just like sweet and didn't need a lot. Because if someone's beautiful, they can't possibly be bad. Or, or like if they're if they're skinny, they can't possibly be bad. Everyone in these books who is like kind, like mm. Mrs. Fig, is like really slight, you know, and she's just looking out for Harry the whole time. But, she's a baddie old lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like I'm trying to remember specific ones um, that were like that. I can I remember James and the Giant Peach, but that had like one really skinny aunt and one really like fat aunt. Yeah, that's true. Okay, first of all, I wish I could, like, unwatch that movie from my brain. Because I watched it a couple times as a kid, and it <laughs> just, like, upset me for life almost. The book is so good. <laughs> the book is so good. I fucking good. hate that movie. It's like, disgusting. You <laughs> it's just, it's crazy to me, Tina, that you watched that movie as a kid, and you were like, wow, that was deeply traumatizing upsetting. <laughs> All right, I'll watch it again next week just to be No, here. it's because it, it was one of my grandma had like four VHSs and oh, we would no. go we would go spend like the whole summer at her house. So yeah. like Oh my god, we big same. VHSs. We had this movie that was made in the 80s called Adventures in Babysitting. Yes, mm -hmm. I know that movie. Yeah. I've seen that movie. Yeah. I have seen this movie probably 20 times because it was one of the only movies the, the other other movies that she had uh Armageddon, not Armageddon. Um, Armageddon's a good movie. Uh, Independence Day, which is a good movie, but has that <gasps> alien dissection scene that traumatized me as a I child. Love yeah, that, that is a little Could not upsetting. watch it. Or Black Hawk Down, oh, which has what? some of the most gory shit <laughs> in it ever, like, oh in God. any movie ever. Wow. So mm -hmm. Adventures in Babysitting is what what was on TV. My grandma's house had VHSs <laughs> of different. Um, it was a series of different characters from the bible and it was like a whole animated <laughs> oh, no. movie about each one oh, wait no. i feel I... like i might have had the same one she had babar too we watched babar a lot oh fucking nice. babar mm -hmm. are you joking me yeah no <laughs> you're just gonna come <laughs> on my podcast and remind me about babar <laughs> how dare you <laughs> i love babar <laughs> oh my god it's unlocking part of my brain that unlocks a part okay i that is, Babar unlocks a deep part of my brain. I, when I was a kid and my whole life, I've had some fucked, I have, I had like braces for 10 years and I've always had like terrible, terrible vision and like desperately needed glasses. I've always had allergies and had to go to an allergist. I've been in a lot of fucking doctors and Babar, I definitely watched in some childhood doctor's office exclusively, but all mm -hmm. the time. Enter 
the fifth owl. Oh the shit! The fifth, the fifth and final owl <laughs> down the chimney because all the windows is closed and stuff. Um, it drops in a letter, and then it dips out again. It's a howler. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's, a, it's a red envelope. We know it's a howler. Harry's like, you open it or don't. I don't give a fuck. Uh, it's gonna explode no matter what. The first two owls are really, really solid. The last three owls are a bit of a letdown. They're like the sequels are just not as good. <laughs> <laughs> the howler is like the grand finale. <laughs> True. And it's not even addressed to Harry. It's addressed to well, Petunia picks it up and it's addressed to her. She doesn't open it in time, so it bursts into flames and it starts speaking. <laughs> I, I I'm like <laughs> giggling because it's a it's a, it's a bit of like a, a an iconic line the howler says remember my last petunia which maybe i read that in the intro that sounds like i should have it's supposed to be in an awful voice though christina you have to do an awful voice is there an e is awful full of awe or just an, a terrible voice just no there's no e in mine at least uh. just, just awful <laughs> Remember my last Petunia. <laughs> Was that awful? Remember my last Petunia. <laughs> this is awful. Wow. Mary, you have to do okay. one. Remember my last Petunia. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get where you're gonna get like like a hate mail recording from someone going, I can't believe you made fun of my voice. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Are you saying someone's gonna send me a howler? Yeah, someone's gonna send you a howler with that voice. <laughs> You're gonna be like, I just sound like this, okay? I'm so sorry if we're accidentally making fun of anyone's voice. I am crying though. Um, so, so Aunt Petunia is not okay with this howler. There's this long silence, and then finally she's like, "Harry stays." I she doesn't. I don't even think she says his name though. I think she's like, "He stays." Stay or like you? He stays. Yeah, he, he stays. stays. Now. Vernon's like, I was on a roll. She says, if we throw him out, the neighbors will talk. Like, obviously not, bitch. (laughs) Obviously, this has something to do with the howler. Remember my last petunia? I want to break that down for a second. I want to talk about remember my last petunia because this is in refer. This is referring. (laughs) Fuck, this is referring. Please share because I do not remember the context of this letter at all. I'm sorry. I have had a a full bottle of wine. This is referring I'm to, jealous. I'm gonna catch up after we're, after I'm done. After we're done. This is referring to, um, like Dumbledore being like, "I cast this love spell protecting Harry, and you have to let him come home to you sometimes in order for him to literally not die because of the protection I put over him." Mm. So remember my last Petunia. Like I want to. Like what the fuck? What a. Would you have worded it like that? Like, what is he? What is the the last the last words he said to her? Like, would you would you perceive that meaning from this if you got this howler? See, to me, it sounded like they were talking about like like remember my last words or like remember my remember my last. Yeah, it, like even as you explained it, I was like that doesn't yeah. necessarily communicate that. Is it? In Dumbledore, are we supposed to assume it's in Dumbledore's voice? A, a, it, it, it's it's a message from Dumbledore, so it okay. sounds like he maybe made it magically scary, almost to like scare her. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, it's like uh, it's like two toned and like like super deep or whatever. Yeah, it's like Dumbledore just opened up audacity, <laughs> must <messed> around <laughs> with the settings. Well, I assume that he would have known that Harry would be right there and hear it, and so he also wants mm-hmm. to mask his own voice so that Harry doesn't know it's his. Because <clears throat> why tell? Why just True. tell Harry what's going on? Yeah, yeah. I guess if you are Dumbledore and you are trying to convey to Petunia, you cannot kick this kid out. What What would you say? Because I would not say remember my last Petunia. I would probably just send a message that's like. That's like Petunia don't or like something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just you could even clear. say he must stay Petunia or remember he must stay or something like my, that. Mine would be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, you're not allowed to let him die, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's your one job. You had one <laughs> job. I gave you that. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> it just says you had one job. <laughs> Do we think Petunia is acting here? Out of fear or out of like duty, you know what I mean. She's probably acting out of like, like 
magical compulsion. Isn't that what you just implied? That, like, the curse is, like, they have to feed and care for him? I don't think it's a curse on them. I yeah. think it's, a, like, a protection on Harry. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's, like, a, um unbreakable vow where if you break it, then something happens to you. I think it's, like, if if she breaks it, something will happen to Harry, which generally she doesn't really care about. But I think she does... I think the point is that we're supposed to believe that Petunia has some little level of... Yeah, she wants him to literally not die right. because then the, the magicians will come get her. Like, it's just not even... <laughs> well, it's not I, even, I think, like, that good of a sacrifice. I don't think... I think after all this time... Always. And after all that they've done to Harry, I don't believe that an actual person like Petunia would be acting out of anything but just fear for her own life at this point. But I do think the narrative is trying to tell us through little hints that she does maybe yeah. still care about him only because he was tied to her sister who she tries to pretend she really hates and hated forever, but does have a little bit of love for. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, I, I, I've said this before, but I feel like if you were going to do a spinoff about like any character. I feel like Petunia would be an interesting choice because it feels like something must have happened. Lily must have done something to her to like, cause it could just be jealousy. It could be like, you know, the Varric situation. Read uh, Blameless, everybody. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Um, I It could be like, there could be a very cool spinoff show about Petunia with like a bit of a Stepford Wives type energy, but like she's trying to like solve something about her sister's murder or something. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like someone revisits from her past and like brings all this shit up again. Yeah, I feel like it would it would only be interesting to me, at least if we saw how she became this person that she is now, but then also how she yeah. changes and rounds out afterwards. Like, I wouldn't really mm -hmm. be interested just to see how she became this child ab abuser. And then it ends. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I want you it, for in order for Petunia's story to work, you would have to watch it get away from her and like her let yeah. it kind of get out of control and then watch it res resolve by her becoming a better person. You know what I mean? Because that's her arc. It's just so funny that, like, the book is just dripping with disdain for the Dursleys, but, like, Joanne is Petunia. <laughs> it's true. Worrying about other people's business. Enter the sixth owl. Now, the sixth <laughs> owl comes in, and he just starts fucking up everything. <laughs> it's Rory. <laughs> yeah, Rory just shows up. He's a rare, he's, he's a like, rare Wah! Hungarian fighting owl, and he just comes in and <laughs> reeks. Comes havoc. in dual wielding pistols. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Love it. So that's that's the end of the chapter. Harry's like, "What was that?" Howler about and Petunia's like go to bed. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. Do either of you have any anything you want to like revisit or like any themes or? So then when the seventh owl enters, <laughs> oh we're we're done. Okay, the chapter's <laughs> over. Cool. No, I don't think so. Is a five is five enough to be a pack? Is a, it's a what peck. constitutes oh a peck a peck of owls? A yeah, Josh but I love you owls. a bushel and a peck. Is that really what a you know pack of owls is called? Because he corrects himself and says, "Oh, I mean a pack." The name of the chapter is a pack of owls. No, I know, but it's it's from the line where Vernon says, "A pack." I mean, no, he says, "A peck." I mean, a pack of owls. Ah, so, interesting. Uh, I just googled peck, it. No, I also just googled it. <laughs> a, Zach, would you like to read for us? A peck of owls was a slip of the tongue by Uncle Vernon in chapter two of book five. <laughs> a peck, I mean a pack of owls. So I googled, I googled how many is a pe is a peck, and a peck is five hundred and thirty seven point six cubic inches. Oh no, I I, I skipped where it said eight dry quarts, which is obviously like so much easier. What, um, what is, is the is volume of bird <laughs> that a peck constitutes? 8.8 .8 liters. What about a kilopeck of owls? Kilo That's just a really badass peck of owls. Tune back in for our math episode on Pi Day 2023. I'll tell you what. This book has a stronger start than a lot of the other ones. It feels like it does not take long to get to some mortal peril of some kind that we're like invested in. Like, oh, the Dementors. I mean, based on how many pages of this fucking book called Harry Potter that I have left. I think they're going to get out of there. 
okay, but uh, (laughs) I am still interested. (laughs) True. I'm just glad that we had so much to talk about because I know there's like a lot of tension and, and dialogue and kind of action in this chapter, but I really didn't think that we would have that much to talk about. Like, it's just arguments, really. Yeah. I mean, what is podcasting but a bunch of arguments? Um, you want to move on to plugs? Plugs. Hey, a cool new thing about season five is our plugs are one sentences. Oh, Jesus Christ. One sentence. (laughs) If you want to explain yourself, it has to be in the same sentence as the thing you plug. Oh, God. (laughs) Zach, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, You can find me at CabbageCast on Twitter. Uh, You can also send an email to at mycabbagecast at gmail.com. Uh, I am on Twitter at CyberToaster. I'm also on Instagram at CyberToaster. I make drawings sometimes. I've been very busy lately. I haven't drawn a lot, but I do uh, do art it, professionally. It is my full-time job, so I like to think I'm quite decent at it. I hope so. Uh, you are quite decent at it. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I was not fishing for that. I, I want to be very clear I was not fishing for that. He is pretty good at it. My plug this week is... The new Jordan Peele movie, nope. I saw it, and it was very, very good. It's kind of about aliens, but not really. That was a cool. That was a beautiful <laughs> plug. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> one sentence. Mary Payton, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, if you so desire, um, at crookmp. Really creative um, Insta handle right there. Um, and that's really it. That's really the only place I exist. Um and I'm gonna catch her on how do I book with Wildling Press? Oh yes, and on um, a better podcast called How Do I <laughs> it's Book? True. <laughs> no. It's true. <laughs> it's at least much shorter. It's at least much shorter. So even if it's but not, what better, am I gonna do if I'm listening to How Do I Book and I'm stuck in a traffic jam for an hour and a half? You can I listen to them chonky... over and over again. There you go. <laughs> a chonky, a chonky podcast host. I need a chonky podcast like the restricted section to put on while I'm stuck in traffic. Well, then find you an audio That's just a 90 minute podcast. Can you believe it? <laughs> 90 minutes is so many. Yes. So many minutes. I have to edit all of that tomorrow <laughs> my own podcast. Mary Payton, what have you been watching, reading, listening to, playing, talking about recently that you think the listeners of our podcast would enjoy? So I want to um, plug a book that I, uh, I'm not sure if, Christina, you already did, but Iron Widow, which I just finished reading. I think that's Iron been plugged like great. eight times. Yeah, l- let me just say that it's a it's a network stance that we plug. That, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Should I should I maybe no no please else? I no you I you every please new person do. who plugs it validates the rest of us more. It is so good, y'all. Like talk about just fucking read it, man. Like Zach was talking about how this this um fifth book like starts off with like mortal peril that book like starts off strong from the very beginning it's so good it's interesting it's like love triangle it's by it just like does also doesn't have to like make the book about that it's just like part of the story which i love if you've ever watched a giant mecha anime and went i wish this main character would like fucking kill bitches yes (laughs) check out iron widow the violence is like so cathartic in this book like, it's, like, good it violence. It is very like much strong. Is. It doesn't yeah. fade to black, but it is so good and so worth it. Um, okay, that's the end of my sentence, but just, you should read it. <laughs> that was a, that was the longest sentence I've ever heard in my whole life. That was the, a doozy I of just a forgot. That's the thing. I forgot that's that it was supposed thing. to be one it, sentence. <laughs> it's never the, it's never the end of the sentence if you just keep saying and. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and you never and, put a period down. That's the end. Iron Widow is a great fucking book, and the sequel comes out eventually soon. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it so hard. I am gonna read it as well. Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I've been your host, Christina. You know where to find me, and I would love to plug the show "Only Murders in the Building." I feel like uh, I feel like Steve Martin and Martin Short just kind of get me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love them so. All much. All their jokes make me laugh, like very specifically. I feel like Alex would really like that show. It's so good. It's so charming. And the the dialogue is incredible. <laughs> it's just incredible. Uh, masterful. Uh, those were all commas, and now I'm at the end of my sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus plug for a game called Cult of Lamb. It's good. No, Zach, fuck off. You had your <laughs> sentence. <laughs> if you're listening to this part of the show, uh, my second plug was cut 
because of uh, <laughs> Christina's vindictiveness. <laughs> Zach, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank I you so was, much for having me. This is always such a blast. I'm I'm so glad to have you. And it was a very silly episode. And I feel like the tone, it was a very silly chapter. And I feel like the tone of the episode matched that. Um, did, I think so, too. Did Rory get to do a plug? Oh, my God, Rory. Rory is going to plug uh, Rio. He always plugs Rio. I don't know why. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> he really needs to branch out. I know. I keep telling him the same thing. <laughs> All right. Before we go, I'd like to say a couple words. Defenestrate, nibbling, catlipigian. Could that be right? Catlipigian. Yeah, I'll I'll give it. I'll give that's that's the best I got. Catlipigian and griffinage. Until next time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my new sign off is working for me. <laughs> no, I loved it. No, no sign off feels authentic. That's it, potheads. Thanks for listening to the Restricted Section. This podcast is produced and hosted by me, Christina Kahn. Our theme music was produced by Ryan Kahn. Our logo was designed by Michael Hardison. Please connect with us on Twitter at Restricted Pod, on Instagram at Restricted Section Pod, on Facebook at Restricted Section Pod, or in our Facebook group, the Restricted Section Detention Crew. Join our Patreon to get access to our Discord server, our bonus episodes, and other cool perks. We're also very happy to be a member of Deus Ex Media, where all you fucking nerds can find all kinds of fandom podcasts to suit your fancy. Coffee. Tea. Honor. Cabbage. Long ago, the four elements lived in harmony. Then, shit went totally cray when the Avatar attacked. Only the Cabbage Man, merchant of fine cruciferous vegetables, could stand against his trolling. But when the world needed some dank veg, he vanished. Ten years have passed, and my partner and I have started a new podcast. My Cabbages! An Avatar podcast. A weekly show about Avatar The Last Airbender. Whether it's Sokka's new line of cologne. Hey! Look at you, sitting there on a seal. Well, now look at back at me. I'm on a, on an even bigger seal. Now look away. D and D related antics. You have to make an acrobatics check for that, and Ang just like unzips his pants and whips out his d20s. He's just like, I got this. Or randomly breaking into song. <laughs> so go bending waterfall. We'll stumble our way through the greatest show ever made, one episode at a time. Rotten cabbages? What kind of slum do you think this is? Well, we could end the show right now. And then you can, that's, that could be the end of the show. Dave X Media.